Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. When an aircraft is no longer needed or wanted, it may be retired to an open air storage facility known as a boneyard. Some of these, like Twenty Airport in the Netherlands, are less about storing disabled aircraft and more about providing a place to repair and overhaul them. Since the capacity of European airports is very small, it's essential that maintenance personnel has a place to train. That's why 20 is often used by mechanics and flight schools to teach students about the plane repair. Another large European aircraft storage site can be found at Tarbes Lourdes Pyrenees Airport in France. Due to the same problem of overcrowding at airports, Tarbes has open designated parking areas for airlines and private owners that lack space for their planes. Tarbes France is also home of Tarmac Aerosave, which provides a range of services for aircraft owners and operators, including long-term storage, preservation, and maintenance. Tarmac Aerosave also offers dismantling and recycling services for end-of-life aircraft, with a focus on environmentally sustainable practices. As with the military planes back in the United States, the steel, aluminum, wiring, and other components in each aircraft all have an inherent value. The process starts with the careful and deliberate dismantling of the aircraft's main systems, including the engines, flight systems, and wings. After the stripping is complete, massive saws are used to begin cutting the plane's fuselage into manageable pieces for further recycling. Since 2007, Tarmac Aerosave has fully recycled more than 300 planes. Since the pandemic, the global supply chain has remained under immense strain. Unfortunately, many organizations and experts predict that material and component shortages will continue for years. This has led to a huge demand market for used serviceable aircraft material, also known as used aircraft parts or UAP. This rapidly growing market involves the buying and selling of aircraft parts removed from retired or decommissioned aircraft. Several factors are driving the demand for UAP, or UAP, including the increasing age of the global commercial aircraft fleet, which has led to an increased need for replacement parts. Additionally, the high cost of new aircraft parts, combined with the economic pressure on airlines and other aircraft operators, has made UAP an attractive alternative. This was a topic of discussion at the MRO Europe 2021. This trade show, which stands for Maintenance, Repair and Overhaul, brings together key players in the field, including airlines, manufacturers, suppliers and service providers. The demand for UAP is expected to grow even further in the coming years, as the global commercial aircraft fleet continues to age and airlines and other operators seek to reduce their operating costs. Of course, another smart way to cut the cost of manufacturing new planes is to avoid doing so entirely. This is the crux of Boeing's freighter conversion program, which can effectively double the life of a passenger airplane. This process starts by removing all the passenger components, like seats and stow bins. 
After this, Boeing engineers will design and install a cowl door on the side of the fuselage, which allows for large cargo containers to be easily moved in and out. Oftentimes, the floor of the plane will need to be upgraded as well, allowing for the installation of a stronger platform with rollers and other cargo-friendly components. From fighters to bombers, nearly every retired or decommissioned aircraft will eventually make its way to a boneyard. This is for several reasons. For one, some military aircraft may need to be brought out of retirement during times of war or other emergencies. Others may be slowly disassembled for parts over the years. Still, others may be converted into other vehicles or recycled. The largest aircraft boneyard in the world is the 309th Aerospace Maintenance and Regeneration Group in Tucson, Arizona. In 2022, the AMARG stored at least 4,000 decommissioned or derelict aircraft across 2,600 acres. Whenever an aircraft is retired to the AMARG or some other boneyard, it must first be flown from its last assigned station. After the flight checks and superficial assessments, the plane will be stripped down, with most of the still viable but non-essential parts taken for use on other aircraft. In some cases, a plane may be in such poor condition that it needs to be transported by truck. However, larger boneyards are almost always located near airstrips to help streamline the process. Upon arrival, the aircraft is inspected and prepared for long-term storage. This may include removing any hazardous materials or weapons, draining fuel and other fluids, and removing any components that could still be useful on other aircraft. There are four types of aircraft stored in boneyards. Those designated long-term will be kept intact for future use, with no parts removed unless they have the potential to become damaged over time. Those designated parts, reclamations, are kept for spare parts as needed, sometimes for decades. Flying hold aircraft are kept intact and receive regular service so that they remain in good working order. Lastly, those labeled excess of DOD needs will be sold off, typically in parts. Properly preserving an aircraft requires protecting it from the elements and internal corrosion. To do this, the plane will be parked in its designated row and covered with the protective coating to shield them from the sun's harmful UV rays. Engines, windows, and intakes are then carefully sealed to keep out moisture, rain, and dust. Even animals like birds have been known to reside inside boneyard aircraft, where they can do hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of damage. When dealing with thousands of planes, many of which are large-scale bombers and transport aircraft, managing a boneyard can quickly become an overwhelming task. Indeed, some of the planes in these boneyards go all the way back to World War II, Korea, and Vietnam.
Of course, aircraft must be carefully cataloged so that it can be found if and when, or its parts, are required by the Department of Defense. Those planes designated for reclamation can sometimes require hundreds of hours of work with heavy equipment to disassemble effectively. It's not uncommon for visitors to see various aircraft from different eras in various stages of deconstruction. Scrapping is not only limited to the components of a given airplane, but to the frame and structure as well. The steel and aluminum inside each plane can sometimes add up to thousands of pounds, all of which are ripe for recycling into new airplane parts. Screws, fasteners, and bolts also have value on the secondary market, as do the beams and panels they hold into place. Using screwdrivers, saws, and hammers, teams of scrappers will spend hours a day taking apart a single section of aircraft. Once they accomplish their goal for the day, forklifts and trucks will be called in to haul the pieces away. Despite the million of pounds of scrap metal and countless valuable components they store, boneyards are also great places to train crash recovery crews. Whenever a plane crashes or is otherwise disabled, these crews are tasked with recovering all parts of the aircraft without causing further damage. Since the out-of-service aircraft in the boneyard is near perfect simulations for crashed planes, they allow for highly realistic training scenarios. Indeed, a single plane will give these crews a chance to practice field lifting using airbags, debogging a stuck plane, setting up recovery sling systems, and collecting hazardous wreckage, just like they would in a real crash situation. Those aircraft that do not end up parked in the desert, converted into freighters or recycled for scrap, will often end up in museums. There are hundreds of museums like this spread all around the world, and each works hard to purchase planes of historical significance. In the case of the Memphis Bell Restoration, uh, the crew has got all the major areas painted. Uh, nose art will be, uh, they'll start that in the next week or two. With the addition of the control surfaces, we have the last major assemblies that are going on the aircraft. Uh, it's really wonderful because for many years we saw the bell and it was uh, unpainted, it had been stripped. Uh, the original paint was uh, gone a long time ago, it was repainted in the 80s. Uh, so the paint was stripped and it looked like another B-17, but with the paint being added and uh, these major assemblies being put on, it really is looking like the Memphis Bell. However, given the age and condition of some of these planes, many will need to undergo extensive repair and restoration services. Luckily, there are men and women who take great pride in their restoration abilities, often producing completely accurate results that people can enjoy for years to come. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.